Hi, everybody. I'm Roseanne, and welcome to the Alcohol Free Podcast. I'm sitting in for James today, and I am an enrollment coach for something called Project 90, and I'm also a client journey coach with the with the same program. Uh, today, we have as a guest Teresa Deshaw, 67, from Michigan. She is a retired flight attendant, and we are going to talk to her about her experience going alcohol-free and how she found peace, peace with herself in the process. Welcome, Teresa. Hi, Roseanne. Good to be here. <laughs> it's so nice to have you. Uh, thank you for being here. Hey, I, I like to start off with uh, everybody with um, just the question of where, what your drinking was like, um, when you started, what you drank, maybe why you drank, and, and what brought you to a place of saying enough is enough. Do you mind sharing that story with us? Sure. I, um, well, I, I've been drinking as long as I can remember, but it was getting gradually drinking more and more. And my go-to drink was wine. That was red wine, Cabernet. (laughs) I mean, it had to be Cabernet. Otherwise, you know, I drink it, but it wasn't my friend. Um, and it just got to a point where I was just drinking more and more and, my lifestyle um, helped with that. You know, I was a flight attendant. We'd fly all over the world and we'd always have great dinners and good wine. And And then when I would come home, I still wanted my wine and I would, I live alone. So in the evening I would, you know, just open up the Cabernet and it was just getting more and more. Um, Were you a, a first class flight attendant? Yes, first class all the way. <laughs> so you had some good taste in wine. That might have gone, it might have gone to be a very expensive habit, maybe. Absolutely. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Oh my gosh. I can't believe how much I have spent in the past oh, cool. on wine. Yeah. Um what 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 do you think precipitated possibly your increased drinking? Or was it always steady? drinking or did you start drinking more at a certain point or well I did yes I um I had a son who passed away it's been 15 years now um and when he died he died of a heart attack after playing hockey at age 25 and we had no clue he had heart issues but I would yes I drank red wine a lot. That's when I first started drinking a lot at nighttime just to pass out. So I wouldn't lay there and just think about everything. And, and that just became a habit. It really did. I mean, I slowly stopped drinking. I mean, at that point, maybe I was drinking two bottles a night. Wow. Just to pass out. I'm so Um, sorry, by the way, for the loss of your son. I can imagine that um, a lot of people listening might be able to really um, empathize with that. We all kind of start this habit and numbing ourselves through some amount of pain and suffering. Right. And right. I can't imagine uh, the loss of, of a child. Um, what was going on with your health um, while you were drinking these substantial quantities of awesome wine? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, my uniforms kept getting smaller and smaller, and <laughs> that I was getting bigger and bigger. Um, so my health um, was not good. In fact, uh, like eight years later, after my son passed away, I had a heart attack, and I'm thank you, God, for letting me be here. It was really uh, close, and. So that was probably seven years ago, and I started to be a little bit healthier. Um, You know, I didn't drink as much wine, but I still drink wine daily. It became a habit. Um, I have friends, you know, we have happy hour if I'm not working, or if I am working, that's, you know, what a lot of us do. Um, But my health was, has not been good until I stopped drinking over 90 days ago. I, my medication's been cut in half, one of them, wow. and um, I've lost 15 pounds. It, it's just been a lifesaver not drinking. Yeah. Well, what, I mean, 
I assume that this is something that you had been thinking of for a long time, but what was the catalyst to actually maybe doing something about it? Well, yeah, Roseanne, I, I tried to quit. Like every morning I wake up and say, okay, I'm not going to drink tonight. That never happened. So I have tried to quit almost every day. And um, I think with the COVID-19 being alone for a while, just gave me time to reflect on, on me and my life. And um, and then retiring unexpectedly, that was an additional like, oh, big, big change in my life. and was it was just time everything just came together and it was time and um I saw the project 90 with Kevin on Facebook and you know I'm aware of other programs out there and I've read books I've listened to audible on how to quit drinking and everything I've you know I have a lot of information in me about how to do it but I never could I never could quit I tried and then it just just came and I made the decision to commit to 90 days and committing in itself was big because I usually say I'm going to do things and I never do them. And I did it. And the only way I can describe it is it was just magical, just uh-huh. magical. Everything just came into place. Right. All the time. And um, I do want to talk about something that you just said. So decision versus choice. I I would challenge you to to think that you might you chose a path to, regardless, right? And that's what made the commitment easier. You, yes, yes, yes. And and probably I said to myself, it's like okay, you can just continue the way you are and drink all the time just you know just enjoy who you are and that's how you are just don't complain about it anymore just be the way you are and know that you're not going to get any better like you want to or you can finally do what you have to do and that's the path I chose yeah and I do want to talk a little bit about something that we we teach in project 90 which is that choice versus decision because it it was a really valuable lesson for me it's something I um, talk about a lot on enrollment calls and um, decision comes from this root word word meaning to cut off right and this is something that Kevin taught you in project 98 right okay and it, I had no ideas it's almost like the death of something right uh decide suicide genocide uh, pesticide it's all about cutting something off permanently and and we're taught in project 90 to choose a path instead of making a feeling like we're losing something in the decision right and when you choose a path you make sure that you're going to get there regardless of the the resources that you need right did that help you um with respect to your journey in alcohol choosing a path I I yes I believe so I mean I, I just knew that that's what I was going to do I chose I I really chose that this is what right. I would do and we talk, uh, for those of you listening, uh, I actually was one of the coaches that enrolled uh, Teresa. And I remember that the, one of the last things that she shared with me, she goes, I really have a, a hard time following through on commitment. And I go, well, guess what? <laughs> Today's the day that all ends. <laughs> and um, you kind of, you did choose a path because you made it seem so easy um, but tell us about your journey and some of the things, like some of the most important things that you learned in this journey. And then I want to talk about maybe, you know, you made it seem so easy, but it's not all rainbows and unicorns as, as we all say, right. There's, there's some little things we trip over, but tell, tell me about your experience during your 90 days of of uh, quitting and some of the important things that you learned that you can pass on to other people? Well, I believe if I remember correctly, like the first couple of weeks, I was like on cloud nine. Wow, this is 
this is great. I can do this. How easy. I, I really did think it was easy. And um, and I loved it. It, it was good. And then I uh, there's triggers out there that, you know, remind us of, well, this is when I, I would normally have my, you know, I'd go open up that bottle of wine and I'd sit down and eat, I'd either eat and watch TV or just something would trigger the old feelings of, oh, yeah, this is when I would drink. And I, I, in the beginning, I noticed them and, and they went away, but it was interesting that they would come back. And then as like in the middle of the 90 days, it, it was a little bit more like, oh, oh, I just, yeah, I, I could drink again, but no, I'm not going to ever drink again, but the thoughts would come. So just allowing those thoughts to appear and then acknowledge them, they went away. So that was difficult. But then, you know, um, we all share on Marco Polo and we all go through the same things. And and that helped me go through other times like um, the death of my son. Something triggered that thought. And that was really a difficult day. That whole day I had to sit there and deal with my emotions, which normally I would have been drinking, but I dealt with them. So that was that was a little difficult, but. I'm so yeah. happy I was able to go through it. <clears throat> and for those people listening, Marco Polo is an app that we use in Project 90 to communicate with each other because we are um, a community that is a worldwide community and we are meeting with each other. But this gets us, it gives us a chance to be all together and share what we're going through. And I do remember you sharing um, the grieving and the loss of your son. In in sharing that, was there kind of a freedom to, uh, how did that help you just uh, sharing that information? Um, it, when it first happened, I I didn't want to share with anybody. I just kind of went into a cocoon stage. I just was feeling it. And then um, I talked to somebody on Marco Polo and, and shared it with her. And she said, you know, that, you might want to share that with everybody else. And she was, uh, at the moment I I did, I just was so relieved. I, it was just such a good feeling. Um, it, you know, the responses I, I got back from people, it just, it, they care and it helps you. Yeah. And I do think um, a lot of people don't realize the power of community when we are suffering, um, we think that we are alone in our suffering and it's a pretty lonely place in our head, right? Um, when, when we feel like there's a limited power of sharing or understanding, but releasing that in a community that's supportive and loving, right? It made a big, big difference. Yeah. Well, ta before this started, we actually talked a little bit about one of the biggest things that you learned um, or benefited from in your alcohol-free journey. Tell us about what that is. What is the biggest thing you believe you gained in your walk? Um, I think the biggest thing that I've gained is peace. It's, it, I'm, I'm at peace with myself. I, I, through this process, I have, um, I've learned who I am. I've accepted myself. I love myself. I, I, I enjoy being with myself. Whereas before I used to numb myself. So I wouldn't be with myself, I guess, but I, I'm so at peace. I'm just at peace. It's just a wonderful place to be. It really is. It's what we all strive for, right? So yeah. what are you doing with your newfound time and uh, energy now that you're alcohol-free? Well, I spend a lot of time with my grandchildren and my family still, but I um, one other thing I put on the back burner for a while was I um, am a certified holistic health coach, and I'm getting my business up and running. And it's another thing that I've committed to, and I'm choosing to do that. And it's it's just so exciting. It's just so exciting to be able to help other people and sober, <laughs> you know, not, right. not necessarily sober, but alcohol free and 
it, it's, it's just a whole different life. Well, I, you know, in my enrollment coach um, role, I talk to a lot of people that do feel like they're out of integrity with themselves uh, as they endeavor to be a healthy version of themselves. And then they drink and have hangovers and realize their liver is processing poison. And this is going to open up a whole new world for you, right? I, I assume that, yeah, you were having were you having some issues with integrity and following through on that business? Oh, I guess you could say that, <laughs> you know, um, talking to Kevin on a coaching, I would have to commit during for the next seven days, what I was going to do. And that really helped. I mean, once I committed, I, I could do it, but up until then, yeah, I would just be a big talker. My daughter would say, mom, <laughs> Just do it because I'd always say, I'm going to do this, going to do this. And she just, just do it. So I am, I am a woman of my word now. Yeah. And, and again, I would imagine, um, as you, as you start practicing, um, and start helping people and inspiring people, this conversation about the benefits of being alcohol free will certainly come into it. Don't you see that as well? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, yeah. Well, that's very cool. And where do you see yourself going with this business? We might have to commit you even further. What Does the business have a name? Yes, it does. Um, the coaching part of it is healthy, weight and balance, which had a play on my flight attendant career. Uh -huh. There's weight and balance that come into play every time you take off in a plane. Um, and, and it has several different programs, you know, online programs, individual coaching. And this September, I will be having my first retreat. Healthy oh, retreat. Well, yes. I might need to sign up. So if somebody were to try and find you right now, how would they um, do that? Is there a way to find you or should they just keep looking for it? healthyweightandbalance.com. <laughs> yeah, that is my website, actually, Roseanne, healthyweightandbalance.com. However, it is under construction right now. Okay. And you can go there and see some things, but they are recreating it right now. Yeah. Well, as this podcast goes out and is seen later on, we have a we have a definite reference. So um, yeah. you you now have a another great reason to keep uh, keep on that momentum and helping people. There's no there's no doubt in my mind, Teresa. As I watched you in this journey inspire others, that you're going to continue to do so. I think that that was one of your goals, right? Is to inspire others when you went alcohol free. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, this, yes, this is a movement. This is needed in our world today. It is. It it's is. not just for me. It's for everybody. We're all in the same boat. Yeah. Well, thank you for giving back in terms of just talking about your journey. Cause I know that there'll be somebody out there that you've helped, um, you know, immensely with your, your own story and your own transition. Um, before we kind of wind this down, is there anything else that you wish to share with people um, about, uh, about being alcohol free, that wisdom that you can impart anything? Oh, golly, there's, there's just so much that goes with living a alcohol free lifestyle. It's, um, it's it's just different. I mean, it's almost like living your life in Technicolor or you know HD. And I have I I have thought at one time that I feel like Helen Keller when she finally got it what water right. is, and then she just ran all around and just learned everything. And finally, she finally realized what it all meant. And that's how I feel with my life. It's just it's. A great life. It's right. And I'm going to quote Warren. I don't know if you saw Warren's post in Marco Polo. I also use this in my Facebook Live, but I think it's worth repeating um, because I, I was so affected by it. And I'm that's how I feel. Warren describes the feeling of being alcohol free as this parachute that 
that was flat when he was drinking. And now that he's removed alcohol from his life, that parachute is filled with air, which is energy and ideas and relationships and positivity. It's like, who doesn't want that? <laughs> For real. That gives me goosebumps. That is great. Isn't it? I know. Yes. He's great with to- coining terms. So thank you, Warren, if you're listening to the <laughs> podcast for giving us that negative information. But yeah. Well, Helen, I uh, can't wait. I will continue to, I mean, Helen, you said Helen Keller and that just (laughs) posited that, that word in my Teresa It has been just wonderful to um, visit with you today and kind of see where your journey's been. Oh my gosh. We didn't even talk about how many days alcohol free are you today? I believe I am 97. Ooh, that's yes. awesome. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just going to be fun to continue to watch your journey and grow and um, just watch your confidence con- continue uh, and, and just watch you influence others because that's one thing I'm positive that you will be doing in the future. So thank you for being with us. Oh, you're so welcome. Thanks, Roseanne. Thanks for listening to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast. I want to load you up with some free stuff right now. So if you want to go to jameswanick.com slash guide, I will send you my Quit Alcohol Guide, which has helped six-figure entrepreneurs and top professionals reduce or quit drinking. You can also text the word Quit Guide to the number 44222 if you're in the US, of course. It doesn't really work anywhere outside of the US. But if you're in the US on your mobile phone and you'd like that guide, text the word Quit Guide to the number 44222 or you can go to jameswanick.com slash guide. If you'd like to schedule a free 15-minute call with one of my top coaches, just an exploratory call to see if or how we can help you, then you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90 to the number 44222 if you're listening in the US on a mobile phone. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90, that's one word, project90, to the number 44222. Feel free to send me a direct message over on my Instagram account, which is at James Swanick. You can also watch video episodes of this podcast and a series of other educational videos on my YouTube channel, which is James Swanick One, or you can direct message me on Facebook at James Swanick Official. And finally, a request. Would you please now write a short review of the podcast inside of the Apple Podcast app on your phone or on iTunes on your desktop? Computer. Would you please give the show five stars and write a quick one or two sentence review? This will help the show get in front of even more listeners, potentially transforming someone's life. You can rate and review the show inside of your Apple podcast app on your phone or over on iTunes on your desktop. Thank you so much and I'll catch you next time.